Hello all and welcome to a new video. In this video we will be looking at the performance difference between the 4080 Super and the 7900 XTX but this time around overclocked. For the comparison I will be pitting the Sapphire Pulse RX 7900 XTX against the MSI 4080 Super Gaming X Slim. And these are the settings set in MSI Afterburner 2614 for the memory clock, core clock set to 3000, core voltage minus 50 so 1100, power limit increased to 15% and the minimum clock set to 2400. When it comes to the AMD card, and the voltage is very important as it's able to sustain higher clock speeds as opposed to when not undervolted. When it comes to the Nvidia card, I had a core clock increase of 210, a memory speed adjustment of plus 1250 and power limit set to plus 15%. I didn't undervolt as doing so means losing core speed, thus performance. If you are interested in seeing the performance difference between the default and overclock setting, check the video in the top right corner. In that video I also explain why undervolting was not possible, at least at the same core speed. As requested by some viewers, I also include ray tracing of results. Before each side-by-side -side comparison, I will be showing the game settings used. In the side-by-side -side comparison, we will see only the 4K runs and I will show as well the 1440p results. Later in the video, you will be able to see all the results in a chart and in the end, I will share my thoughts. My sweets. Now why'd you go and do that? Stomping around like that and scaring the poor little things. It's tweet, tweet, my sweets. Now why'd you go and do that? Stomping around like that and scaring the poor little things.
for the ward. What you did and all. Rushes and combs from Firenze. Try them, my lady. Why not change your hairstyle? Thank you, but I like it like this. Oh, good for you. A woman's hair is her. Rushes and combs from Firenze. Try them, my lady. Why not change your hairstyle? Thank you, but I like it like this. Oh, good for you. A woman's hair is her. What? I'm amazed. Of facility 3826. Step right up. You can become part of collective with a thought device, comrade. I wasn't able to test Ratchet and Clank with ray tracing using the 7900 XTX because of the beta drivers in combination probably with the fact that this is an Nvidia sponsored title. This was the only game that had this issue. Now let's look at the graph for the 4K averages. The green represents the MSI 4080 Super while the red the Sapphire RX 7900 XTX. The driver versions are displayed on top with green the Nvidia ones with red AMD ones and also the chipset drivers. What is important to note that there are some games that don't pass the 60 FPS mark, the blue line drawn on the screen right now. And bear in mind these are the averages, so these games with the bars that stand on the left hand side of the blue line need tweaking. As above 60 FPS averages are needed to enjoy a smooth gameplay experience. Feel free to pause the video to have a better look at the chart. The 7900 XTX managed to average 84.28 frames per second across all game tested, while the Nvidia card managed 82.57. The Nvidia card only does better in ray tracing games. When moving to the 1440p results, we see in one game where Nvidia didn't pass the 60 FPS mark, and that is Alan Wake 2 with path tracing. In Cyberpunk 2077 with path tracing and DLSS quality, the Nvidia card managed to average 74 frames per second, and that is because of DLSS ray reconstruction, which was disabled in Alan Wake 2. Again, 
feel free to pause the video to have a better look at the chart. When it comes to the average across all games tested with different combination at 1440p, we see the 4080 Super Overclock leading a bit with 131.94 while the AMD card managed 131.51. This came as a surprise to me. Now let's have a look why. The first game that I'll be checking is F1 23 with Ray Tracing Off. In this game, the AMD card leads by a big margin as we can see on the screen here. But this is to be expected, right, as the AMD without Ray Tracing usually leads. But let me show you that this is not always the case as there are some games where the Nvidia card when we are not using ray tracing leads. This is Lies of P and to be honest I'm not sure if this is an Nvidia sponsored title. But as we can see on the screen here we see the AMD card trailing a bit the Nvidia card. I retested a few times and these are the correct results. Note that this is a pure raster game. Now let's move to another game, Spider-Man. This game supports ray tracing but here we are checking without ray tracing. In this side by side I zoomed in a bit to see better the frame rates. And the Nvidia car leads even without ray tracing. So the 7900XTX doesn't always lead when it comes to raster games. If you are interested in seeing the performance of these two cards in their default setting, check the video in the top right corner. And there you go, the 4080 Super seems to be a bit better at 1440p, while the AMD card, the 7900XTX tends to be a bit better at 4K, mainly because RT is not that important and also I don't think it loses that much performance because of the bigger bus 384 compared to the Nvidia's 256. I did increase the memory speed but I think that didn't help at least to listen up the blow at 4k. If you liked the video hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. Hope to see you all in the next one. Take care.